there, Griff Hamlin here from Blues Guitar Unleashed. Welcome and thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to wrap up, uh, basically wrap up a series we've been doing of licks from each individual box, right? We have the five boxes, so we've learned five slow blues licks, one lick from each box, and now it's time to put them together. So that's what I want to talk about today. Now, there's a couple of things that sort of pop up. And these things uh, can can be a little bit confusing uh, if you don't know exactly what's going on. Now, hopefully you've practiced them the way I explained with the counting because that's what's gonna make the difference. So if I just go through the licks, one, two, three, four, five, right? That's, that's not complicated, it's fairly obvious. The first lick, one, two, and a three, and a four, and a one, a two, and a three, and a four, one, and a... Now, it ends at approximately beat two. So if we look at this next lick, it starts at the end of beat three. So that's like just over one beat away, if I want to push them close together. Now, this is the decision that you have to make. You don't have to, you can leave a bar of space. That's totally fine, and in fact, when you're new to this, I would just about recommend it, okay? What you're gonna notice is that, okay, ending at about beat two and starting at the end of beat three, it's really, it's plenty of time to get from one to the next once you're comfortable with it. But you may find when you first try it, that that's not as easy as it sounds, <laughs> and that's okay. What is most important at this point for your future in soloing, I don't know how else to say that, but the thing that's going to to benefit you the most is to be conscious and confident about what you're doing. And by conscious, I mean that you've decided I'm going to play the next lick and it starts on the uh of three in this case. And the next time that comes around, that's when I'm going to start it. So you've got to be listening to the track and going, okay, I'm waiting for that next one to come around. Now for you to do I'll say those mental gymnastics, the first time you do it, you might go through that first lick, um, you know, and it ends, uh, let's go back to that first lick, and that it ends two and a three and duh, right? And of course now I could start, but you may very well be still thinking about it and still, still being clear and confident and intentional about what's going to happen next. If that's the case, Simply wait till it comes up again. It's not a problem. Just wait. Just leave the bar empty. Leave two bars empty if you have to. It's fine. Okay, just leave them empty. I promise that the better you get at this, the more comfortable you get with the licks themselves, the more comfortable you get with choosing one or the other, the, the more you can just put these together and that gap between them will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so... Let's say that I I am going to put them right together. So three and a four and a one and a two, three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one, two and a three and a four and a. Now, at that point, I might think, okay, well, I should go on to the next lick which is no problem. One and a two and a three and a four and a one. So that goes no problem. Again, there's not much space here. You might want to hear more space. You might want to leave a bar simply because you want to leave some more space. It's always okay to do. But in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and you know put them together. Okay, but when I get done with that, it's notice that I've got about three, two to three beats, depending on how long I hold that bend. I've got two to three beats of empty space there. I've got a beat of empty space here. I'm not going to add any more empty space than that. That's plenty. That gives me some nice phrasing. So one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. Four and uh, and I could go right into this one. One and a two and a three and a four and a one, two and a, right? And I could go right into it. Or again, there's roughly a beat of empty space here. 
roughly a half a beat here. Maybe that's not enough. Again, while you're going through the thought process, it may not be enough, and that's okay. What I hope I can, I can impress upon you is that when you try this stuff out for yourself, wait as long as you need to. If it takes a couple bars before you get the next idea out, then it takes a couple of bars. It'll get better, okay? So let me play through all of them kind of as I might do it. Let's check it out. One and uh, two, three, and I won't count from here, but one, two, three. So maybe I might do the first lick again. And of course, it doesn't matter what you choose. Those five licks were pretty close to taking up the whole 12 bars. It might be that had I not pushed them quite so close together in some instances, they would have taken the entire 12 bars. And of course, that's something that you can play with. And that's just simply going through them one after the other. One from box one, one from box two, one from box three, one from box four, one from box five. Those are the five licks that we have learned thus far. But what I can do is I can put them in some sort of different order. Now, solos in general tend to sort of have what I call a story form, where they tend to go up, 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 and then they fall off. So they tend to move their way up the fretboard a little bit, but then they do tend to come back down towards the end. Not always, but often. So what if we try to do the licks in a different order? That order is going to be two, two, three, one, five, four. So next three, and then one. Followed by five. And then four. So again, this is just kind of jumbling them up. It's kind of like I just took the dice and rolled them and saw what came up. So let's try it with the track. Two, three, and uh, four, uh, one. some nice built-in space. Get some more built-in space. I might go to box two, I might continue on with whatever. As before, it doesn't matter where you go from there. But this is a great way to start to learn to improvise with these licks once you've learned them. Okay, so let's say you've learned one from each box. You can try to put those together into a solo. You can try to mix them up, mix and match, right? Maybe you've learned two licks out of each box. Okay, or maybe you have two licks out of box one, but you only have one out of the other five boxes. That's okay, now you have six licks to mess around with. If you start thinking about it, and you start, you know, as you start to get into it, every time you add one more lick, you increase the number of possible outcomes by an outrageous amount, right? If you have four licks and you put them together, 
there's, you know, four, three, two, one, assuming four times three times two times one, assuming that you don't duplicate any. And this is the little bit of math class I do remember <laughs> from my first time in college, <laughs> right? If you have five licks, five times four times three times two times one, six licks, six times five times four times three times two times one, seven licks already just becomes an astronomical number. Okay, so you get to eight licks, you get to nine licks, you get to 10 licks, 10 times nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two. It's, it's just, it's a lot of possible outcomes. So you realize very quickly that you don't have to have learned all 50 licks from, and these of course are all from 50 slow blues licks by the box. Uh, you don't have to have learned all 50 to get an enormous amount of usage out of the licks. So choose your favorites. There's no harm in that. If one of them gives you a hard time and you don't play it so well, that's fine, <laughs> right? If you only have, if you only get to 40 licks, right? 40 times 39 times 38, right? Think about how many you have, you have tons. So don't beat yourself up if there's a few of them that you just can't get or they, you just don't like them, they just don't sound good to you, that's fine. Okay. Now, another thing that's also come up is some students have said, well, when, you know, you play this lick uh, in the, in the trading videos, right? You play the lick and it sounds a certain way. And then I play the lick and it sounds different. And of course that, that can happen because the chords are constantly changing, right? It's going through the 12 bar form, but that's also a very good thing to be aware of because if you do happen to hear that going on, that means your ear is involved in the game. That's really, really a good sign. That means you're listening to how these licks are interfacing with the chords, right? Um, if if we have, you know, one of the, something like this. Right, that's gonna sound one way over the A7 chord, but let's say it's a D9 chord, it's gonna sound a different kind of way, or an E, the E9 chord, right? The three chords in the blues. So maybe it happens over this chord and maybe you decide you don't love it so much. But maybe when it happens over this chord, you decide, wow, that's, that's, a, that's a sound that I really, really, really dig. Okay, so those are the little things that as you improvise with them, as you practice with them in this way, using the jam tracks that come with the course, as you do that, this is how you're gonna pick out those little, little tiny details. And those are the things that are gonna make you a better soloist and they're going to make you sound like you. <laughs> That's the big key, okay? So I hope this makes sense and, and hopefully you've been able to keep up with these licks that we've been learning. Hopefully they've been valuable to you and you've had some fun with them. Of course, remember, you can always come back. If you couldn't quite keep up, don't give up. Okay, these are really, really great. Um, the 50 Slow Blues Licks by the Box um, is, is still on sale as of this video being posted up. I think it's got a couple of days left. Uh, so if you wanna grab it for about 35% off, now's a good time to do it. Again, I'll leave a link near this video for that for you. But um, if nothing else, hopefully you have learned some new licks and maybe a little bit of a different way to approach learning them and utilizing them, okay? So as always, I'm Griff Hamlin from Blues Guitar Unleashed. If you dig the video, please feel free to share it with any guitar playing friends, and I will see you soon. Take care, bye-bye.